Today we're going to talk about how to record good quality audio for your videos, whether that be through YouTube or live streaming, podcasting, whatever it may be. There's a couple of quick tips that I wanted to give you in case you're looking for ways to improve your audio. Now we're in an unusual place for what I typically record in. We're in my closet and it's pretty bare bones. I figured this would be a good space to talk about audio and some things that you could implement to improve your audio recordings overall. This isn't gonna be a video for somebody who's a little bit more experienced with audio and video, but if you're just starting out, this might be of benefit to you. Nothing here is rocket science. It's pretty straightforward, so keep that in mind. And we won't go into too much technical detail about specific microphones. I don't want it to be a video where I just say, oh, get this expensive microphone and all your audio problems will be solved. No, that's the furthest thing from what I want to do. <laughs> I mean, I love microphones, don't get me wrong, but that's not going to fix your audio. The environment that we're recording in right now is pretty bare boned, but I figured it'd be a good space to actually talk about audio because in this environment here, it's a little bit more condensed than something like a uh, big hallway or, or living room. So what that means is that we have a little bit more, I guess it's a little bit more tight and condensed for the audio to not travel very far while we're recording. You could actually do a lot with a small space like this. Now, I happen to be using a Shure SM7B. You've probably seen this microphone before. It's extremely popular. It's featured on the Joe Rogan Experience. I believe they use it on the Breakfast Club as well, but I'm not gonna tell you again, go out and buy this microphone if you don't want to. You do not need to use this microphone to get better audio. Trust me, you don't. But what I wanna say about this microphone is that it is a specific type of microphone and that's called a dynamic microphone. Dynamic microphones are geared more towards vocals and more so broadcast environments. This microphone is really well suited for environments that are not treated very well, but you can get them close to the subject. They are better at reducing reflection than another type of microphone, which is called a condenser microphone. Typically a lot of shotgun microphones are condenser microphones. I want to make something pretty clear that even in this space, we're still not getting the best audio that we could because even this great $400 microphone isn't going to fix a crappy environment. I mean, really, that's the bigger thing. It's like when you talk about video production. Everybody says, oh, this camera can do X, Y, and Z, myself included. I know, <laughs> I know I do that too. But really when it comes down to it, your lighting is going to make a big difference. And in this case with audio, your environment and how you treat your space has a much bigger impact. And so I wanted to talk about a couple of little things that you can do to improve your audio space or where you're recording. You can implement this in places like here. You can implement it in places like the living room. It, it really doesn't matter. I mean, and, and again, none of this is really that complicated. Don't think it's rocket science because it's really not. We're going to use something very simple. Everybody has one of these. It'd be weird if you didn't. We're going to pick up a blanket and I'm going to actually show you the difference on how this sounds in this tiny little closet space. So bear with me for uh, one second. All right. So if I hold this blanket up, you can tell... You can tell right now there is a lot less reflection in this in this space just because I held this blanket up. I think I'm I don't think I'm losing focus on the screen. So this blanket is reducing a lot of the reflection in this room, even just by being on one side. This is nothing special. I, I don't even remember where I got it. It's just a basic, everyday, typical blanket, and it greatly reduces the reflection in here. Now, if you're listening to this on your iPhone um, or your smartphone, then you probably won't hear much of a difference, but if you're listening on headphones or earphones, you'll probably notice the difference. It's, it's relatively substantial. Now, I know not every specific recording requires making sure every little reflection is out of the actual recording, but if you want to improve your audio, definitely treating your environment with something as basic as a blanket can definitely help. You can even use something like moving blankets or even paying a little bit more of a premium for sound absorbent blankets. A site called Automute sells those. I happen to have one, just not here. They do a much better job than just these, but I do have something else that you can look into as well. So this is a, and you can already hear a difference, I'm sure. This is an Automute sound panel. 
and it's a little scuffed here, but it's not hanging up now because, like I said, I'm getting ready to pack uh, a number of things. But this is really good at absorbing those reflections and that reverberation. I just wanted to showcase the difference between the reflection on these wooden panel walls. And when I hold something up like this, it does make a pretty substantial difference. And you can imagine that between holding this up here or, or hanging it up and then having another one on the other side, how much improvement that could be to your audio quality overall. Again, I think the biggest point that I'm trying to make here is that treating your environment is the biggest, biggest factor in getting good quality audio. The other thing that we need to talk about too is what I previously mentioned a little bit before is the difference between a dynamic microphone and a condenser microphone. Now I know some of you are watching and are like, Listen, I don't want to have a microphone in the shot. I'm trying to do more commercial work, doc work, or corporate work, more film style interviews, and having a microphone in a shot just makes it look like I'm on a podcast. And I totally get that, totally understand. So in that specific scenario, you're going to want a shotgun microphone. And typically those are mostly condenser microphones. Now, a condenser microphone is going to be more susceptible, susceptible to reflections in an environment like this, more so than a dynamic microphone. So you definitely wanna to remember to treat your environment or at least consider the environment that you're recording in. Shotgun microphones are better at directional recording. So they're, they're good at capturing speech and dialogue from a distance away where dynamic microphones, they need to be really close to the talent. I don't believe there's any shotgun microphone that's a dynamic microphone, at least I, I've never heard of one. So those are the types of microphones that you would wanna consider. In fact, I have one right here. I'm gonna actually plug it in. I'm gonna show you the difference between the condenser microphone, AKA the shotgun microphone, and the dynamic microphone, the Shure SM7B. So give me one more second. Okay, so this is the condenser microphone. This is the shotgun microphone that you would typically use in an environment where you're trying to not actually have the microphone in frame. Now, obviously here I'm using it in frame. The difference between both of these microphones is like I said, this is a dynamic microphone. Uh, this is a condenser microphone. So you wanna make sure that whatever you're using, you consider the environment and the actual use case of that microphone. Now, obviously, like I said before, I know plenty of you are out there and saying you don't wanna use a microphone like this. You wanna have a microphone out of the shot. Well, this is the type of microphone that you wanna use. Now, you don't have to get something like this specific microphone. This is a kind of a pricier microphone. You can do something as simple as like a, a Rode Video Micro or a Rode Mic Pro Plus, you know, something along those lines. If I were to, you know, walk three to four feet away from this specific microphone, it would have a very hard time capturing that audio. I would have to jack up the gain. These are very gain hungry microphones where these condenser shotgun microphones are not. Again, you can spend $2,000, $3,000 on an amazing microphone. If you're in a crappy environment, it's not gonna make a tremendous difference. So just keep that in mind. And clearly in this specific space, you're, you're hearing more reflection or you should be hearing more reflection from this specific microphone because uh, shotgun microphones like this Sennheiser are more prone to reflections and um, weird kind of artifacts and, and noise in very reverberant environments. Now there are specific microphones that are that are designated specifically more so for indoor dialogue. They are kind of like shotgun microphones, but you can definitely get by with something like this. You just wanna make sure you're treating your space. So we're gonna head to my living room now and we're gonna test the audio quality with the microphone just out of frame and see how that sounds. So now we're in the living room here and this is not a very treated room either, but this has some things that are breaking up the, the reflectiveness in the audio recording. There's furnishing, there's plants, there's a TV stand, there's a fish tank over there that might be being picked up in the recording. <laughs> but this is a good example of a scenario where maybe you want to shoot and not have the microphone in frame. I do have a wider lens than you'd probably typically use on like a commercial or corporate shoot, but for this demonstration, I think it's totally fine. The microphone is the shotgun microphone that I use. The microphone is about just over a foot away from my mouth, and we're able to capture good quality dialogue by just having the microphone out of frame. The shotgun microphone is designed to be able to capture sound at a distance. So this is a perfect scenario for it. 
Now, I could use a dynamic microphone in this situation, but if I'm not trying to have the microphone in frame, that obviously doesn't work for the given situation. You could also use what's called a lavalier microphone. I don't have one here with me at the moment, but that's the type of microphone that you attach to the talent's body. You can run it up their shirt, uh, clip it to the, uh, the collar, or actually use a sticky and hide it underneath. And that's a good option as well. You can actually get the microphone closer to the talent than you can with a shotgun microphone. However, there are some trade-offs with that as well. The, the challenge with those microphones is if the talent moves, you could pick up ruffling of clothing or some sort of unwanted sound. So there are some trade-offs with that, but you can still definitely use those. I know on Broadway, they use them in theatrical performances. So you do have a couple of options with recording audio and not having the microphone in the shot. And the reason I'm also using the wide lens is because I wanna show that even with a wide lens, I can still get the microphone out of frame. So if you're using a tighter lens, it'll be a little easier for you as well. So yeah, that's how to capture dialogue or audio recordings without having the microphone in the frame. So now we're outside. And this is really the intended use case for the shotgun microphone. Um, there are specific shotgun microphones that are designed for indoor use. The one that I'm using specifically, the condenser microphone, the Sennheiser MKH416, is really geared towards outdoor use and outdoor dialogue. So that's where this microphone really shines. And you'll probably notice too that we don't really have the reflection that we had indoors because we're not in an indoor environment. We're not uh, confined to those four walls that were surrounding us before. But now we have a couple of other challenges such as wind, uh, cars driving by over there, um, and animals crawling in the back of the skate park. <laughs> I have no idea what that was. So those all present themselves as challenges too, but yeah, the shotgun microphone does a really good job at picking up sound um, from a distance. So I actually, I'm not booming it typically on like a Hollywood set or a commercial set. Um, they would have a, a boom operator or they'd actually have the microphone uh, actually placed overhead. Um, right now I'm just using a little tripod to uh, just hold it, handhold it specifically for this video. So you might see it dipping in and out of the frame. This really isn't typically how it's, how it's done, but yeah. Uh, so one thing that you can't do with a dynamic microphone is you can't put the microphone further away from the sound source because you actually have to increase the gain dramatically on those dynamic microphones. Whereas you don't have to do that with the shotgun microphones. So that's why I was saying before, if you're, if you're trying to record sound from a distance, the shotgun microphone is really the obvious choice in that scenario. Another thing is wind. I think wind is probably the biggest factor and that's where you would want to use something called a dead cat or a blimp if it's really gusty. Um, but yeah, so this is really what the intended use case is for shotgun microphones. Now, if I was trying to capture audio from a distance and I was trying to walk towards the camera, the best solution in that particular situation is a lavalier microphone. So you can actually attach it to the talent or the subject that you're filming. In that particular case, I would definitely go with a lav lavalier microphone. Don't go with a shotgun microphone, but that's a specific use case. Yeah, so those are just a couple of things to take in consideration if you're trying to record audio out doors. So we'll go back inside now. That pretty much concludes this video. Was there anything that I didn't cover that may be of interest to you as it relates to getting better audio quality? I'd love to know and I'd love to hear your feedback. So uh, as always, I appreciate you guys checking out this channel and as always, I'll catch you next time.